Hi, I'm Liz Haywood, Chair of Chilkat Valley Community Foundation, and I am delighted to finally be able to welcome you to tonight's 2021 Grant Awards. Thank you to computer, computer guru Sam McFeeters for coming down from his home and getting us set so that we could be live. I'd first like to acknowledge that this event is being held on the original lands of the Tlingit people, which includes Chilkat Indian Village and Chilkoot Indian Association. We pay our respects to the elders, both past and present, for their stewardship of these living lands. And we offer this acknowledgement as a path forward in sharing, learning, and working together for a collective future. Before we formally announce the 2021 grant awardees, we have several speakers from organizations that have received grant funds this past year. When our community was hit by the devastating storm disaster back in December, CVCF acted quickly with the Alaska Community Foundation to establish the Emergency Response Fund to help support both short-term emergency needs and long-term recovery needs due to the disaster. Because of the generous donations that came into this fund from literally all over the country, we have been fortunate to have been able to award six grants for a total of $82,000 towards early recovery efforts. And we have remaining funds to help with rebuilding efforts this coming year. One of the organizations that received emergency response funds to help those impacted by the disaster was SAIL, Southeast Alaska Independent Living. Here to tell you tonight about some of the uses of those funds is Janine Allen, a SAIL Independent Living Advocate and a case manager for the Long Term Recovery Group. Janine. Thank you. The writer and uh, Holocaust survivor Edith Eager wrote, we can't choose to vanish the dark, but we can choose to kindle the light. On behalf of SAIL and the Long-Term Recovery Group, I wanna say thank you, CBCF donors, for choosing to kindle the light. So far, SAIL has helped disperse $30,000 from the CBCF Disaster Fund. I wanna take a moment and share the light you've created with your generosity. You helped secure housing, safe housing, for 11 community members displaced by the December weather disaster. You replaced the following items that were damaged by flooding. A mattress, a bed frame, a desk chair, a washer and dryer, and a computer. You helped dig out a cabin from sand and downed trees. You literally did create light. You provided electricity to one home. You provided gasoline for a generator to power a home on Beach Road. You provided supplies and building materials and you enabled 11 volunteers with Team Rubicon to come and assist nine homeowners with disaster debris processing and to take those initial steps toward debris uh, removal and recovery. Team Rubicon was so amazed at the generosity and community in Haines but they've selected us as one of two communities in the nation to launch a brand new rebuilding project. You are helping light up a more resilient and loving community. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Mardell Gunn with the Victory Garden to tell you how they used their grant from 2020. First of all, I wanna say that we are so grateful and appreciative of the grant that we got awarded um, to the Victory Garden. So for those of you who don't know, the Victory Garden um, is a 6,000 square foot piece of sod and dirt that was dug up in uh, two years ago. So we've been gardening out there for two years and um, produced for two years a very healthy garden with lots of produce. So our purpose and our vision of the Victory Garden is, is that this is one piece, one small piece of food security in our community. And 
it's a little strange to be working on this as a problem because we don't know exactly how this problem is it's going to show itself in our community and exactly when. But the idea is, is that we're going to be one step ahead. We're going to be on top of it when we need to have more local food grown in our own community. So we partnered with Watersh Tukshina Watershed Council. Um, they have a mission as well to include food security. And um, we use their nonprofit um, status, for example, in getting this grant from Community Valley Foundation. Um, and we also have done some educational. For example, we did a Zoom fermenting workshop with them um, a few weeks ago. And we aim, our goal is, is that we're gonna do more and more of that with them for educational and community building. So typical of garden projects, if any of you have worked on them, you have lots of energy and, and enthusiasm in the spring when everybody wants to get out there and garden. And then everybody gets busy in the summer, you're fishing and whatnot, but then everybody gets done with that. And then in the fall, you have more people come back. This is one of the things that we are learning to deal with and we have... Um, it's, it's our goal to figure out how to, to harness this community involvement. So the grant was really helpful to us in that it helped pay for a coordinator and that coordinator is actually working on other grants. We have two grants right now in the works to help fund um, more of what we've been doing. The other thing that it did is, is it helped us buy soil for our um, our plant sale. And the plant sale was not only a successful fundraiser, we've done several very successfully, which has been great. But the other piece of the plant sale was is that it also was an educational component. And it's also the beginning of it's more starts out there that are locally grown, so therefore more locally grown food. So um, we hope to do that again. That's part of the whole process. Um, and that's just a really quick, um, quick overview of what we're doing and we are it's an ever-evolving project and we are so appreciative of the community support that we've gotten so next we get to hear next year's grant awards molly sturvident who is the newest board member is going to be doing that i'm not sure how she got the best job of doing it but she <laughs> got it and so she's now going to be telling us next year's grant awards well thank you mardell and good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure as a new Community Valley, Chilkat Valley Community Foundation board member to announce this year's grant awards to 16 local nonprofits. These diverse organizations each offer unique services to the Haynes community, and it's our privilege to be able to support them through the foundation's endowments. So we start with the Alaska Avalanche, Avalanche Information Center, with a mountain of gratitude for all the public safety efforts that they do in our community. And we're happy to provide a $3,000 grant as operating support for their Haynes Avalanche Center Public Safety Operations. The Avalanche Center has proven itself a beacon in this storm. This year, the Salvation Army is awarded $3,000 in operating support for all the incredible support they give to the, those in need in our community. The money will go toward their 2022 Haynes Core Food Security Project. Thanks very much to the folks that keep everyone warm, fed, and secure. Southeast Alaska Independent Living, or SAIL, provided a steady course through rough and uncharted waters during and after the 2020 weather disaster. And CVCF is pleased to award $3,000 for SAIL's 2022 operations. Woof woof to Haynes Animal Rescue Kennel or Hark for the work they do on behalf of all of our furry friends, including keeping homeless animals safe and finding new homes for them among others, many other services. For 2022, CVCF grants $3,000 of operating support for Hark's Chilkat Valley Canine and Feline Population Control Project. Meow, meow. <laughs> Take your mark, Haynes Dolphin Swimmers. CVCF is proud to announce the $2,000 grant in operating support for the Haynes Dolphins Swim Team Scholarship Program. Go ahead, dolphins, and dive right in. And speaking of water, 
the Friends of the Pool is receiving a $500 special project grant for the purchase of a Red Cross approved mannequin for use in lifeguard training. So it's okay if you fall in. Moving back onto solid ground, we're pleased to award operating support in the amount of $2,101.70 to the Tokshanuk Watershed Council for their popular Marvin Garden project. The money will go toward repairing the hoop house as well as expanding the program, including creating more garden beds, increasing the composting operation, and adding individual classroom bins for K through 12. Thanks, Tokshanuk, for keeping everyone's hands dirty. Ever vigilant in providing alternatives to the landfill, Haynes Friends of Recycling will use their grant of $1,650 on Project ROW, R-O-W, Reduce Our Waste, a public education program that includes a weekly newspaper ad with easy tips on how to do just that. It will also support new banners for our the HFR zero waste events. Waste not, toss not. Always heading in the right direction, the Rural Alaska Community Action Program is awarded $2,000 in a capital grant, which will go toward the Rural Cap Haynes Head Start and Parents as Teachers project. Top projects include replacing the worn flooring at Head Start and providing eight months of free books to families in order to promote reading to children at home. Out of the storm and into the warm, Haynes Huts will be putting its $2,000 capital grant into building Tukka Hut, the first public use cabin in the Chilkat Valley. Thanks Haynes Huts for keeping it cozy. A museum holding such cultural treasures as Sheldon Museum and Cultural Center does as it does, deserves top-notch security. And to meet that goal, an operating support grant of $2,000 will go toward the museum's necessary security upgrades. Thanks for keeping it safe. To capture an eagle mid-flight or a river changing course is a lot easier these days with drones. In order to get into some tight spots, Lynn Canal Conservation will be using a $988 capital grant from CBCF to help get drone footage of the Chilkat Valley. We very much look forward to seeing fantastic photography of things that we might never have a chance to see otherwise. Always on a learning curve, the Alaska Science Teachers Association will use a $2,000 special project award to offer a place-based education workshop for Alaskan teachers. The five-day course will take place right here in the Chilkat Valley with all teacher training done by our local experts. Outdoor school never sounded more enticing. Speaking of beacons, Eldred Rock Lighthouse Preservation Association has been awarded $1,750 in special project funds for needed repairs due to 2014 storm damage. On the National Registry for Historic Places, the lighthouse will see its captain's walk replaced and the heavily damaged lantern room repaired. We can see for miles and miles. Can you sing that song? <laughs> The Raptorific American Bald Eagle Foundation will be using a special project grant of $994.13 on its Flora Interpretation Project. This project involves installing new educational interpretive signs that describe native plants growing around the muse where the birds reside outside. And for number 16, finally, CVCF is awarding the Chilkat Valley Preschool a grant in the amount of $1,750 to assist the school in extending its operating hours, which will in turn help out working parents. Thanks to the preschool for making things a little easier for working families in our community. So there you have it for the 2021 CVCF grant awards a total of nearly $32,000 going to benefit 16 community projects in Haines. Wow. Thank you. Thank you to all of the applicants for your work in Haines and congratulations on your 2021 CVF grant awards. 
Your efforts and the volunteers who make your projects happen are deeply appreciated. And now for the final part of our program tonight, here's our board chair, Liz, to say a few further words about the Chilkat Valley Community Foundation and this year's grant awards. Thank you very much. Wow, congratulations to all the 2021 grant awardees. And thank you all for your efforts to make our community a better place for all the residents and visitors alike. Thanks, big thanks are due tonight to high school computer science teacher, Sam McPheeters for his technology support, to American Legion post commander and CV staff board member, Chuck Mittman for the use of the Legion Hall. And to all the CV staff board and the three community members who served on this year's grant decision committee. I'd also like to express our sincere appreciation and gratitude to both the Alaska Community Foundation and Rasmussen Foundation for their ongoing support to CVCF since 2008. And finally, a huge thanks to all our donors who through their overwhelming generosity and their strong commitment to this community for the past 14 years have made all the grants through CVCF possible. Truly, you, our donors, are the Chilkat Valley Community Foundation. That's it for this year's grant awards. We hope to be doing this in person next year. Until then, from all of us at CVCF, please stay safe and be well. <laughs>